nothing if you can't teach your children to hunt. And I'm going to sound a little apostate right now. Hey. This is what actual black revolutionaryism. It's extremely conservative. That is something the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a.k.a. Mormons, needs to learn from the black church. You can't say don't be a prepper and then be like, I didn't see the disease coming. No, 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 no. Yeah. If you didn't see the disease coming, I get to be a prepper. I don't know if you can take prepping too far. He's, I mean, this is like Teddy Roosevelt type stuff. This is gonna be the best day ever. This is gonna be the best day ever. Wake up. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Ward Radio. I am your host, Cardinalist. Today, I'm joined in the studio by Kwaku L. And today, we're talking about our boy, Killer Mike, teaching Fifth Sunday School. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are not familiar with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, we have Sunday School every Sunday, and the odds in the even Sundays are usually uh, based, I believe, off of gender. It is Kwaku, right? Don't you have Elders Quorum and then Relief Society for the ladies? Yes. And then the... Th Thir the first and the third is based off of age, right? You go to Sunday school, like um, based off of age, uh, gospel doctrine, the newbies go uh, right, 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 into, right, right, you know, yeah. gospel principles and stuff. But every once in a while, there's a fifth Sunday in a month in which the bishop gets to choose what uh, the lesson is. And it's supposed to be based off of the local needs of the congregation. And let me tell you, that's where Killer Mike comes in, ladies and gentlemen, because those fifth Sunday meetings, true or not true, Kwaku, they're a little bit weird sometimes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it depends. If you're in like Nebraska or something, you can have a weird. <laughs> yeah, you know, as, let me tell you, I, I feel like Killer Mike just gave the best fifth Sunday uh, lesson on home preparedness and food storage, my friend, a beloved uh, principle of the restoration. So here we go, Killer Mike, go. We're in the South, we're in the heart of the South right now. Who fishes? Who knows how to fish? Hands down. Who knows how to hunt? Let's hands, hands down. Who shoots on a regular basis, meaning once or twice weekly? Hands down. Now you see how many hands? Who farms or grows their own food right now? Hmm. Hands down. You ain't ready to oppose nothing. You are as a part of this system as any white person gentrified in this city. And you can't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about because I've lived in this neighborhood long enough to know when, when two out of every five yards had a garden in the back. I'm old enough to know him when the Muslim community was the strongest security force and food their own food force in this community. Black people, I love you and I love you enough to tell you, you ain't ready to revolt. You don't feed yourself, you don't hunt your own animals and slaughter them, you don't prepare up your own meat, you don't own your own land, you don't have a seed growing in your window. So when you think about revolutionarism and you think about fighting and dying in the street, you ain't if you can't feed your children. You ain't nothing if you can't teach your children to hunt. I've been hearing this revolutionary talk all my life. All my life, I've been seeing leaders get before me and tell me how much of a strong warrior and just like the United States Army. Dude, was that... Yes! Was that not awesome? Your thoughts, Kwaku, hit it. Um, yeah, so I think years of arguing have just <laughs> been finally made clear with one Killer Mike clip. You see, yeah, well, Killer Mike's politics are very left. But I've been telling people and these dummies in the comment section, uh -huh. oh, Quake who's being woke, all this whole, the black uh, separatist. This is what actual black revolutionaryism. It's extremely conservative. Dude, the Black Panthers were the biggest Second Amendment like movement the world when has ever seen. they walked around seen. Oakland with their freaking AKs and they're like, yeah, we're going to patrol our community now. We don't trust the cops. And you're like, oh, well, what is more conservative than a bunch of in-shape men in uniform <laughs> holding guns saying we're protecting our women and children. Yeah, telling all of their cohorts and all of their compatriots, since you don't have a gun like me and you're not as in-shape as me, you are out of the club, dude. Like, what's funny is, I can't remember the name of uh, the public speaker, but he said something so interesting. He said, a lot of people think that it's like white, waspy Republicans that are like the conservative, you know, people of the United States of America. He's like, no, dude. 
go to the black church. You know what I'm saying? And by the way, I love the black church. Farrakhan. We did a whole episode on Farrakhan and NOI. And it's like, he is literally like the black pope in America. Like that man is extremely powerful. Direct connection to to, to Malcolm X, even there was some. And it's like, you want to know you want to know who's who's listening to Farrakhan like Mike Rashid and like all the rappers literally if Farrakhan calls any rap Farrakhan picks up and calls Lil Wayne and says be at my office tomorrow you know who's on his flight there Lil Wayne immediately and let me tell you <laughs> Farrakhan's not liberal that guy is like David Duke <laughs> like, that guy is so far right you're like oh my god what what did you say my goodness he is just anyway so. No, the, the, when you get to hardcore blacks, like like revolutionaryism, uh-huh. it's, it is conservative. What well, it is, and 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 to the Lehigh guy watching this with the Captain Moroni painting on his wall, <laughs> who thinks he's a conservative, you are nothing compared to these people. These people will put you to shame in terms of conservatism. Their women don't leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, here's what's crazy, man. Is is I don't know if you noticed this, but the whole time Killer Mike was just talking, he started getting louder and louder, and the people started cheering louder and louder, and I actually had to lower the volume and lower the volume so it wouldn't peak and it wouldn't clip. And I have to tell you, that is something the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a.k.a. Mormons, needs to learn from the black church. I think everybody does, but we do especially. First off, the music. Dude, old school Negro spirituals, freaking top notch. There's not better Christian music out there. And second, the crescendo. It's like this communal thing. Like once the pastor's like feeling it, you know, he's like, let me tell you, you are not prepared to lead crap. You know what I'm saying? And they're like, um, amen, amen. Oh, now we're taking it to 11. Now we're taking it to 11. Oh, oh, no, now he's going to nine. Well, I'm sorry, they're no, taking it from also, eight to nine. Yeah. Uh, First, um, there's also a classic thing in black churches, which the pastors will do. And next time you watch like a black service, go pay attention. When they make a point, they'll walk away from the podium. Have oh you yeah, seen that and they'll walk Home away. Homegirl for Bernie Sanders did that all. Oh the yeah, time. it's a classic yeah. tactic. And everyone, it's like they just walk away, and, and for some reason, it's the coolest thing ever. Dude, even MLK did that when I've seen the mountain. Oh yeah, it's a very, it's a you know? class. It is a, it works so well as a rhetorical skill when you're trying to re- like rally up an audience. So, I'm just saying, like yeah, like this is this is hardcore, like, <laughs> like. Yeah, if you can't hunt, if you can't fish and build your own stuff, he's. I mean, this is like Teddy Roosevelt type stuff. You know what Dude, I mean? This like, is hardcore, like, man. You know, you know, I grew this mustache for a reason. Because <laughs> now I can become a woodsman. You know. Also, can I also say, we we should prove this on the show. Uh, okay. Because I, I'm, you know, I'm, hey, you know I'm, how they like blazed the trail for black skaters and black surfers yeah, in the yeah, '90s, yeah. and like all the companies were trying to push free merch on anybody that yeah. was black that was willing to skate or surf. Like, do you are you going to start getting sponsorships from like Ruger for their Woodsman uh, 22 pistol? Are you going to start yeah. having the flannel, the flannel jackets? Are you going to get free Matt Walsh flannels? Well, here's the thing. You okay, know, <laughs> here's what people forget because I am from the city. I'm from Houston. In San Francisco, but here's what people forget. I didn't do Boy Scouts, but I did theater my whole life, and I have built a lot of sets. I have built a lot really? of sets. Oh yeah, like okay, I, I'm good at wood shop. Like, Shut up! I was really? phenomenal at wood shop. I can, yeah, I can like I can build a birdhouse. I can build a desk. I can I can build crap. Shut pretty, up! Are you easily. kidding me? Really? Not at all. Like it's really. I can Why do you it. let me sweat it out with that 1938 Zenith radio that needs new veneer in there, bro? I gave I guess, you a suggestion. Well, I know you're good at talking. I just didn't know you were good at doing. Bro. No, yeah, I can. Like, let's make an episode. Like, actually, I, mean, I will comment literally. I what will, you want to see me build? We will do a Ward Radio like Home Depot. I'll build like I can. I can build crap. <laughs> I will stop our recording and do that today. Like I, oh, I'm, here, I'm a, here's I, one. I'm not kidding. I am 100. percent Here's down. one right here, Quaku. This is just foam core paper that yeah. surrounds my on air uh, amplifier right here. We just have to make a wooden box for it so that it's wooden and I can stack stuff on it. That that will be our mm. fun, Quaku, the woodworker, the woodsman. Do, yeah, I'm like. I actually, that was one of the things I thought about doing during COVID. Uh-huh. Um, when I was like starting business, I was like, maybe I should, I could, like, I could, I could totally, like, like make designer tables and sell yeah, like yeah. designer I, tables. It wouldn't be like, um, who, who's uh, my, my neighbor or boy, uh, last day's guy, Sean. Oh, would, yeah. Okay. It yeah, wouldn't yeah. be like Sean who's like, like really 
really in it. You know, where yeah. like he he's like he's dedicated a three car stuff. garage to it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Okay, but like, yeah, I've I, I I built I built bird houses for people to make extra cash when I was a kid, dude. And, well, did, and yeah. you would blow up on like Etsy and stuff like that because you could start filling out all the creator demographics and say like you know like uh, a, a black owned business and things like that, and they'd be mm-hmm. like pushing you big time. Like, and you could like sell overpriced bird houses. Yeah, and like be what's awesome. right before a carpenter? Because it wouldn't be a carpenter. Because it's like I feel like when you're a carpenter, you're you're like doors, really anything you need for like a home and stuff. I'm I'm talking more like like no, you're I, talking I can, woodwork. I can build this desk. No, yeah. See, see, what you're talking about is woodwork. Yeah. Carpentry is more like framing and residential, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. totally different. That's yeah. structural. And that's what uh, Sean does. In construction. He's a yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's totally different. So, um, the old school definition of carpentry was a little bit more along the lines of woodworking, but now woodworking is widely understood as utensils, furniture, smaller items, higher quality and craftsmanship than like air gunning together the frame for what's going to become a three car garage in a, a bedroom right, community, right, right? right? Which Jesus was a tecton. That's probably what he was. He was a yeah. what? The Greek word is tecton, which is oh, the equivalent yeah, yeah, of yeah, like yeah. A, a general contractor, not just a, a carpenter and a woodworker with a little chisel, right? So well, keep you know, going. Uh, uh, J- Joseph worked a bunch of odd jobs according to documents and Mary was a hairdresser. Mary was a hairdresser? Yeah. What? Where's that come from? It's 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 a it's it's an, it's an apocryphal not apocryphal but it's in some of the Gnostic references. I think Josephus mentioned it that Mary was a hairdresser. Some of the Jewish accounts mentioned it. Yeah, is that why you why you like all of the hair school chicks in Provo? And- no, they're just <laughs> okay. Actually, I don't actually like. I I used to, I was a couple of hair school girls I messed with, but I I've gotten a little less into the hair school. They're just kind of I don't know. Yeah. I'm, so, well, here's my question. But think about it. That's the most Utah County thing. That's true. A guy That's starts true. his own church. And his his mom's a hair school girl. And his dad's <laughs> an odd job entrepreneur, or a hair school dropout. One of the two. Yeah. yeah. So um, then l- last thing here, like we just got to tie this into the gospel. We talk on the show about anything and everything tangential to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. I know there was that like document two or three years ago where the church tried to come down on preppers who I guess apparently were taking it too far. I don't know if you can take prepping too far because when that zombie apocalypse com- comes, you know you'll be grateful for, for that uh, extra tin can of thirty odd six ammo, right? I'm gonna be honest, my thoughts about that thing, and I'm gonna sound a little apostate right now. Okay, what? Uh, first, <clears throat> when the church, um, the the, co- the conference at COVID, the first COVID conference, general okay, conference, yeah. when President Nelson got up there and he said something along the lines of, I had no idea that there would be a worldwide pandemic when we uh, came up with the idea of, uh, of at-home church. Um, I'm like, okay, first, you should have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rightfully, that's your job. I don't want... If you didn't, don't tell me you didn't see it coming, because I want to think you saw it coming. Just get up there and be like, prophets really do see from the watchtower. Yeah, like you should have been like, hey, (laughs) you know what? Come follow me. We announced it. We all had to stay home. That was for a reason. He could have even just said that. Don't tell me you didn't see it coming. Because (laughs) first... You can't say don't be a prepper and then be like, I didn't see the disease coming. No, 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 no. Yeah. If you didn't see the disease coming, I get to be a prepper. That's how it yeah. works. <laughs> if you don't know when the when it's about to hit the fan, I get to go because, again, I was the guy who went to Smith's right when the news started dropping and we started buying toilet paper. I bought so much <laughs> toilet paper from Smith's because I was on the know of what was going to like, things are going to be matches, toilet paper, water bottles. This stuff's going to go fast, and we zoomed right there, right there from <laughs> 600 North in Provo, and I bought so much toilet paper. So um, I do want to bring this back to the gospel uh, essential of home preparedness, personal preparedness, and obviously spiritual yeah. preparedness, but I would like to put a small plug in before we segue into that topic for the bidet. You know, have you had a, a chance to partake in the bidet that's in the studio, Bonyo? you know, because- um, when there's no toilet paper, you'll be glad. You know, all of us that have served missions where there's bidets that now have them in our house because it's the elevated form of okay. uh, anal cleanliness. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what, are, what are your uh, thoughts uh, on the bidet, bro? The, the reason why bidets <laughs> haven't caught on as much in the country is because you can't brag about it without, or like <laughs> be excited about talking about it without also referencing your butt. And no one wants to hear it. It's like, honestly, it's you know that, that there's like dude wipes from Shark Tank? Uh oh yeah the dude wipes those, those were good I don't, and those but those should be more mainstream like I don't that should totally. be really mainstream I Will think. Smith I think uh I, I think said in an interview once they always uses baby wipes 
And from well, what, from what I understand, Will Smith that makes sense. Doesn't <laughs> oh, geez, you're brutal, man. You're Gross, brutal. Man. So the uh, anyway, um, so about home preparedness, I know the church kind of denounced the whole prepping thing because apparently there were some people that were taking it too far and they thought it was necessary. But um, I got to tell you, I still feel like that's one of the uh, one of the heavy hitters in the zeitgeist of of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. You know, uh, just having your seventy two hour kit. Having your two years supply of food, you know, are you down to are, are you down with that kind of thing, or do you think that's all kind of passe? I think um, that uh, we should know how to garden. We should know how, like all that stuff. Like we should know how to build. Like I think that's totally fine. Word. And 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 I think I think people in the city. Who are who are better at 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 or like 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 if if the world started ending tomorrow, you know that the, like the Ellis's would find would corral all the friends. You guys would go to somewhere and like you'd have you'd have a place yeah. to kind of go. City people, think of country people aren't really that prepared. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think country people are all talk. Really, I think they're all talk. I okay, think, um, and I think the, I think city people are the mindset's already there because first. You gotta They're, fight to survive every yeah. day. What's it, what? How is it gonna be different in the all, zombie apocalypse? All them liberal sissies over there in New York. Wait, first you, you, you live in, in, in you live in, 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 in Grantsville, Utah. No, they're tougher than you. They're actually. In the streets where there's crime. Except for the PBA guys that I take very seriously, the Professional Bull Riding Association guys, I actually tend to agree with you because the truth is, do you ever notice in all the zombie apocalypse movies, where do they always end up? They don't end up further outside of the city. They all end up having to go back in. Do you ever notice that? Yeah. It happens in uh, uh, The Walking Dead. It happens in the 15th iteration of Dawn, Night, or evening of the dead, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? They always got to make it back into the cities, bro. So no, yeah, I, I, I honestly, I think city, I think if city people learn some gardening skills and learn how to prepare meat, they, they'd be more, they'd be unstoppable. I think these country people are all talk, and I didn't. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say this. Oh, do it, do it. Last time we talked about this on the show, I'd never been in a fight. I've only been in one fight. You got in a fight? Bro? I got into a fight. Who? What? I got into a fight. Congratulations, man! And, How did um, it feel? Uh, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not blowing smoke. I'm not blowing smoke. And it wasn't like horrific, but I mean, there's, there might be some kind of, I don't know. It, if it I, came if, to fisticuffs. If, okay. You know, it was a country boy. Really? It was a country boy. Yeah. Okay. It was, Sp- it was in Spanish Fork. Okay. Oh, okay. I won't get into the details of it because I'm, sh- I'm sure, I'm sure this is gonna get clipped in the comments. Yeah. Gonna let it. <laughs> anyway. Um. I'd never been in a fight before. It w- getting this guy on the ground was not difficult at all. And I was like, aren't you supposed to be the tough ones? Oh, aren't you supposed true. to be the tough ones? That's true. You should have put him in a heel hook and a chokehold. Yeah, yeah. The, that like, would have been. That I'd love been. to put him in a heel. I'd like to have a conversation with him. <laughs> Did you send him a strongly worded letter with I'd a love heel to hook? put him in a heel hook and a chokehold. <laughs> yeah, I was ready. I was ready to kiss my 16-year-old girlfriend right on the lips <laughs> on my... As a twenty-two year old on my mission. Anyway, that's my <laughs> You do a you do a, a, a seven out of that's ten Mississippi bishop impression. Anyway, I, I we're gonna drill, but but we we city people do need to get better at that. We do need to learn how to prepare meat actually from from the like the animal to the kitchen. We need to learn how to prepare it. We need to learn how to be growing food in gardens and get some weapons. But honestly, let me tell you though, I think city people will actually will be the ones that survive the apocalypse. I think the country people are too isolated. Um I don't really? okay. I think they're too isolated. I don't think they'll be able to carry on um their families because of the the you get you got no choice but to start inbreeding. I think city people <laughs> and I'm like oh, no no, I'm not kidding. You go to some rural town in Alabama and there's three families, you're done. <laughs> okay. No, I'm being re- if some real cataclysm happens and for 100 years Oh, you're talking about isolated gene pools. Yes, yeah, yeah, they've, they've already had that problems in the mountains of Appalachia. Yeah, it's it's, a, where, or it's already a problem. Um, it's got a bit of a problem in Utah as well. But you know, yeah, you get to some of those. Oh, weird, some of those colonies yeah, out there. Ivans yeah, I stuff, know what you're talking people. about. Yeah. But then it's like, okay, so I'm sorry, you give me a hundred dudes from Oklahoma and seventy dudes from LA, in like a in a fight, I got money in the LA guys for sure. Really? For sure. 
Okay, well that's that. That's them be in better words. shape. Can run faster. Every guy in L.A. who grew up in L.A. has been like on a street late at night, and it's like I gotta make it back to my car, and I gotta get there quickly. Like, well, there's, there's definitely all the- once you've lived once you've lived in downtown L.A. Once you've lived in I, I, I lived in Harlem, Los Angeles, good parts of town, bad parts of town. You know the whole nine yards, and uh, one of the best indicators of how well you would do in a fight actually really is just having been in other fights before. And what gets you into most amount of fights? Just sheer population. So generally, if you live in a highly populous area, you're going to have a lot more experience with other human beings. Some of them are going to you know, need a certain type of interaction. You know. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, congrats on so, your fight, bro. How did it end? I won. I will, it was it was not difficult. What was the marker of winning? Did he just go back crying to his mother? Did he say, "Okay, stop, uh, uncle, oh, uncle, uncle"? What well, did he say? I mean, so his fr- his fr- like our buddies were around. Okay, you know, so they kind of had to, to intervene. Yeah, but it it was not difficult. I, did I you, really did. Thought, you do some like fake Kyle Glenn Bishop AI quotes where you're just like, "Yeah, I'm gonna teach him that we mean business. Come on over here. I'm gonna show you that we mean <laughs> oh, business." Oh yeah, the, the, like yeah. the fake Brigham yo, Young. Yo, quotes. show those Native Americans that we mean business. I'm gonna see? show this Spanish fort guy that I really gonna come to fisticuffs. No, you okay, know? <laughs> to be honest with you, um, I just I could tell we were about to fight because the tension. He was getting really really close, and uh-huh. so um. He he went in for one push, and I was like, I just got to go like an animal, and so I just well, uh-huh. I just went like like went for it, just went straight for the attack, like hard. really, whoa! Like, like didn't, I went straight to a ten. Wow. Yeah, because it was like I got and there were hot chicks watching. I can't I can't lose. You know what I'm saying? So it's I got awesome. my first fight ever. It was not difficult, and this guy was. I was like, these the country people aren't as tough as I thought they were. No, some of them are. Some of those ex military country guys. Yeah, but they're hardcore. Lot, and and there's like, well, no, th- you mean those kombucha drinking. LA liberals with their herbal tea that'll yeah. smash the kombucha on the table <laughs> and stick it in the side of your neck. Or, or the, yeah, you mean the people that are living off of like organic tree water? Yeah, yeah these these like country boys are drinking five monsters a day and they're overweight. Like, I'm sorry, I got my money in the LA guys for sure. And if you grew up in an LA, Houston, San Francisco public school, you've been in some real fights. From some kids that like grabbed the pencil and broke it and had a shiv and it's dude, like, I remember you know, the first like, time I was kicked in the face, dude. It was in yeah. freaking seventh grade. Oh man, mm-hmm. it was brutal. Guy came up, thought I was talking trash, like immediately confronted me, and I was like, dude, what the? And I hadn't thought about it before. He was like, oh, bash. I was like, oh, so this is what it's like, yeah. man. I'm so, just, I'm just saying, there's some, there's some. Uh, I don't know. Killer Mike is right though, and you know what, black people, and I'm not saying this just because I'm, I'm dressed like him. <laughs> I literally wore the same thing as Killer Mike is in this video. You got the chains and everything, bro. That's awesome. I look. I've been saying this. MLK, M- Malcolm X, great leaders. If there's ever a black leader that's going to reverse the effects of redlining, that's going to reverse uh, the sabotage that's put in place to stop generational wealth from being created when they were burning down places like Black Wall Street and stuff. And if there's ever anybody that would that could find a way to siphon the money. Out of some of like the super wealthy like families that are descended to the slave owners, like all their money two hundred years ago from the it's gonna take someone who's a Teddy Roosevelt type. It's gonna take a black man who is knows how to hunt, knows how to run, knows how to fight, knows how to start a business, can build stuff. It's gonna take a woodsman. Okay, you think that's Killer Mike? Are you saying no? That you I don't run think it's. I, I don't think it's Killer Mike because I could see all of that except for maybe the running part. I don't know how he, well he would do on yeah. the mile. You know. What I'm well, saying? and again, he's still he's a musician, but it's it's gonna take yeah, it's true, gonna take true. a vindictive psychopath. I wouldn't want to fight him. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't want to fight a guy like Killer Mike. Oh no. man! But it's gonna take someone like that because you know what the Al Sharptons they did they, they've done their thing, but it's like you we need we need a we need a new blooded. I'm I'm not going anywhere. Like Terry Crews in a fa- a flannel and a trucker hat is what you're looking yes, for. Yes. Yeah. And you know what? We it's going to happen soon. Because here's the thing, Black people, remember our voting block's disappearing. Our, we're not having as many kids. Okay. That's one way to put it. Yeah. Well. You know, okay. Well, pl- black people are boarding too many kids. That's one way to put it. Black people are boarding too many kids, and white people aren't having enough kids. Okay. And so Latinos. I love them. Got no problem with it. But Latinos are about to become the most important voting bloc in this country. They're about to just start determining everything. Because if I understand, the black vote is like 13.5% of uh, of America and so on and so forth. And aren't Latinos like already at 12% or like just, just nipping at the heels of the black vote and ready to surpass them by 2030 or and, something? And that's also ones that we've counted. Yeah, true. It's hard to get a real... 
You yeah, know, we don't have widespread, I don't know, Nigerian illegal immigration, exactly, right? You know what exactly, I'm saying? It's like exactly. there's an ocean between us <laughs> and yeah, them. Yeah, so, so yeah, I mean, the future, of, if, if black people really want to, 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 to make the mainstream good, and, and again, black finances are improving. Houston is, is freaking wealthy. Like some of the wealthiest uh, parts of Houston are all black neighborhoods now. Things are getting a lot better, but Killer Mike is right. What happens, by the way, if China does invade? Like, like, what happens when if Russia does drop a bomb, and we've got to be like, okay, we got to collect ourselves, we got to be, we got to be good at this. Like, yeah. I need to go hunt, I need to go fish. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're fine in Utah. You're gonna get some fish out of Utah Lake and, and kill your whole family with lead poisoning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Are we gonna do true, Utah? Dude. Geneva Steel kind of ended that for you. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, Killer Mike, you're welcome to come on our program anytime. Talk some, you know, zombie apocalypse prep, some spiritual prep. I think he was in a church when he was doing that, uh, that whole meeting there, and he talked about having uh, been in the church multiple times before. Maybe we can have a fun little interfaith, uh, interfaith exchange. But um, you're welcome to come here in the studio, talk some prepping, both spiritual and physical. Let's keep the conversation going in the comments below if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're listening on the radio. Also on the comments at hometownstation.com. Either way, for this and more, please check us out at wardradio.com. This is going to be the best day ever. This is going to be the best day ever. Wake up. Talk of the morning. The bacon is crispy. The is pouring. My meditation is peeling an orange. The bank says I'm already scoring.